Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention? Please have your tickets in hand before you board the plane. Thank you. Hello and welcome. I'm Yuan Castell and you're watching We on Wings. On the show today, we'll take a walkthrough of a quaint and peaceful spot in Manali. And tell you about the latest visa updates for Thailand and Sri Lanka that affect Indian tourists. We show a cafe in Thailand that serves up grain cake. How Mexico celebrates Day of the Dead and what goes on near the Pyramids of Giza that draws in art lovers from all over the world. We recently visited a homestay in Manali in India's Himachal Pradesh. Let's explore what it's like to live in a traditional Kapkuni house in this area. The 2023 devastating floods of Himachal Pradesh left many properties damaged in the Indian northern state. But just a kilometer away from the Bias River in Manali lies this abode that survived the battering monsoon rains this year, thanks to its resilient nature. Gadkuni structure. Uh, this is made on uh, 1920. This is uh, basically Himachali traditional house. This cart means like love wood and khuni means corner. Cart khuni. The wood corners. Kath Khuni, an indigenous construction technique prevalent in the Indian states of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. It has been passed on from generation to generation for centuries. The traditional technique involves alternate layers of wood and stone masonry held in place without using concrete to hold the structure together. This technique is the secret of making these buildings so long-lasting. With time, many villagers are opting for brick and mortar structures, leaving this traditional architecture a thing of the past. This is a uh, pine tree wood and this is a uh, mountain stones. This structure made by the like uh, only mud, stones and pine tree only. I love nature and uh, we promote like eco-friendly tourism. So that's why I started this pro project uh, called mudhouse.com. You know, a few days ago, flight was here. So, this is the property of the property. And this is a thing that the earthquake property is always good. And because they have made the property, this property is made in the same way. So, they have made the natural disasters. So, this is the same thing. We made this uh, glass wall, the glass window. And uh, uh, this is like mountain stone. And this is all pine tree wood we use and this is like 200 years old wood and uh, we made this uh, gate like small because this is a Himachali culture. But what caught our eye was the interiors of the room. Would you believe it if we tell you that this property used to be a horse stable during the British rule? So this was a horse table. Then we renovated all, all the room and all. So this is a uh, wood and, and this is mud. And this is the Himachali Pattu, the traditional uh, Pattu. This is beehive and we made uh, in every room. And in this winter, we have uh, honey bhi aata hai. So local people, uh, yahan pe jitne bhi hai, wo apne ghar ke wall mein, uh, bee houses banate hain, jisme ki uh, winters mein usme so honey bhi nikal sake, so natural and pure honey. Construction mein isko sirf restore kiya hai, isme kuch changes nahi hai. Jaisa house hi tha uh, before uh, 1920, so usse waise hi house abhi bhi hai. Is 
इट्स इट्स वेरी नाइस एक्चुअली यहाँ का जो वेदर है और इस वेदर के बीच में एक मड हाउस जो लाइक है हिमाचली कल्चर जो आप अगर बहुत सारे होटल्स में देखोगे तो वो चीज़ें आपको वहाँ पर नहीं मिलती है बट यहाँ पर एक इट वाज लाइक ए पीस इन्वामेंट विथ वुडन वुडन फर्नीचर्स मतलब इट्स इट्स वेरी नाइस With projects such as mudhouse.com, travelers can witness the rich heritage and history living in the present. Now you know what you need to add to your itinerary. The visa rules for two top destinations close to India have been updated to attract more tourists. Let us show you the latest from Sri Lanka and Thailand. In the middle of last month, the much-awaited ferry service between Tamil Nadu and Sri Lanka was launched. The service covers 110 kilometers in around 3.5 hours, depending on the conditions at sea, for a cost of around 7,700 rupees, or around 90 US dollars. This is not the only thing that shows the strengthening of ties between the two countries, aiming to expand the number of Indian visitors further. Sri Lanka recently updated its visa rules for visitors from seven countries in a pilot project. The project that affects tourists from Russia, China, and India will run up to March 31st, 2024. Around 200,000 Indian tourists have visited Sri Lanka so far this year, making up around 20% of the nation's tourist arrivals. Another country that is opening its arms to Indians is Thailand. After recently opening visa rules for Chinese visitors in September, the country has adopted visa-free travel for Indian tourists too. Like Sri Lanka, these rules are in effect over the winter tourism season, lasting from November 10th, 2023 to May 10th, 2024. The stay is limited to 30 days and also includes visitors from Taiwan in a bid to draw in more tourism. For Thailand, Indians make up a large part of the tourist inflow to the country, placing fourth after Malaysia, China, and South Korea. More than one million Indians have visited Thailand until now this year. Halloween occurred on Tuesday this week, and to get spooky for the special day, a cafe in Bangkok had its witch waiters serve up brain cakes with a sinister laugh for the customers. For the faint of heart, stepping out on Halloween might be frightening, depending on where you are in the world. Some restaurants and cafes are cooking up special treats for the occasion. This cafe, which just opened in September in Thailand, is one such spooky place. Here, the staff could be spotted in full face paint and all dressed up, greeting customers with a sinister laugh. On the menu is an assortment of childish treats, like your signature brain cake served atop a skull. There are also edible eyeballs and a drink named unicorn blood. But what do customers have to say about this? And what is unicorn blood like? Every corner that we go to in the cafe gives a wow factor. The food, although it looks scary and the description sounds scary, it doesn't taste bad. It's quite good. I drank the unicorn blood, a good luck potion, and also dragon eggs. I like unicorn blood because it tastes good and refreshing. The cafe in Bangkok, Thailand, has been decorated with cobwebs, spiders, and skeletons, all to get into the spirit of Halloween. Although the waiters are dressed up as witches, wizards, and creepy clowns, many customers visit in full costumes, even from overseas. In a cafe that gives a wow factor like this, there are plenty of chances to take Instagrammable photos and shouldn't be missed. Over to Mexico now, where the Day of the Dead was celebrated this week. The colorful day saw local residents come together to honor the deceased. For Mexicans, honoring the dead has a special celebration dedicated to the occasion. This is called Day of the Dead and officially takes place from the eve of October 31st to November 2nd. 
The unusual thing about this celebration is that the living remember and honor their dearly departed not with sorrow but with celebration. The preparations begin several days before the day of celebrations with workers cutting out and assembling paper masks and decorations. Another integral part of the special day is the skull-like bread called bread of the dead or pan de muerto. It is widely consumed on the day of the dead and not just for eating but also for home altars as offering to honor the deceased. Markets across Mexico City were crowded with people buying marigold flowers and other items to decorate their loved one's altar. The annual event brings countless families to cemeteries with food, photos, flowers and mementos of the deceased. According to tradition, residents believe the dead visit during these auspicious days. We have the belief that our dead come to mingle with us on these important dates and they come to eat some of those traditional foods that were important to them, that they liked so much. It could be sauces, it could be fruits, it could be drinks, a Coke, all those items we enjoyed together when they were alive. They take their essence with them to enjoy it in the afterlife. In the Mexican city of Morelli, children were invited to participate in a costume competition. Most of the participants decided to dress as Catrinas, an iconic symbol of the festival. The city is famous of its Day of the Dead celebrations and saw many people combine Halloween costumes with Katrina costumes. On the first day of the festival, the focus is on those who passed away in accidents, continuing with those who died in childbirth on November 1st and those who died as adults on November 2nd. Over to Uaxaca, where cemeteries were crowded as families gathered for the annual event. This event is one of Mexico's most colorful holidays and it is a Mexican tradition that is passed on from one generation to another. Here in Oaxaca, many communities believe that all souls start arriving on the night between October 31st and November 1st. The tradition combines Roman Catholic observances of All Souls Day with pre-Hispanic customs of offering flowers, food and other offerings to souls. Moving on, let's go to Cairo now, where massive sculptures can be found in the vast dunes on the city's outskirts for a special art event. On the sand dunes in Egypt near the Giza Plateau, an intriguing sight can be seen, with large, beautiful and creative sculptures populating the otherwise empty desert Visitors can be seen wandering around and taking pictures of larger-than-life creations. This is all part of an exciting event called Forever Is Now, created by Art the Egypt. This is the third annual desert exhibition set against the magnificent backdrop of the Giza pyramids. Spearheaded by Nadine Abdel Ghaffar, this groundbreaking event is the inaugural and exclusive contemporary art showcase at Egypt's revered UNESCO World Heritage Site. It provides a unique opportunity for the public to engage with both ancient and modern expressions in a captivating dialogue. Let's hear what the founder says about the event's name. Forever is now is a real statement. Um, this civilization is a testament to so many things and that humanity will prevail no matter what. The number of wars, pandemics, everything that happened around them and they're still there standing tall and proud. Um, and the now is us, the nowness is, is us, the people of today, translating this language of the past into the language of the present which is a language of peace. You don't need to speak a certain language. You don't need to be from a certain country. Everyone, everyone understands this. This year's sculpture exhibition unites 14 talented artists, an increase from 12 participants in the last year's event. Through their diverse artistic approaches, these creators illuminate the enduring themes that bridge our ancient heritage to the present day while also honoring the ongoing creativity of human civilization. Let's hear from the artists. 
Well, uh, my artwork represents um, uh, a, a lost uh, labyrinth from uh, an old historical uh, mythology uh, from uh, Greek mythology. That, uh, and I've uh, depicted some of the drawings uh, of this uh, labyrinth. So when the sun is coming down, it's really in the center of that, of that piece, aligned with the pyramids. So, and to be here on the playground of the pharaohs, to be connected with them, to have that, that uh, time gate to try to jump in, I would love to do that. And I have so many questions for them. How about this sculpture by Greek artist Kostas Varotsos that lets you see what the pyramids would look like next to water? Well, it was a, a great honor, first of all, and an incredible uh, opportunity to try to find an equilibrium with this unbelievable mo uh, monument. Uh, my goal was to find this equilibrium through a horizon, of water. I kind of wanted to create this idea of a gold carpet at the foot of the pyramids where people slowly can start interacting with the, with the piece and just like be really becoming in tune with nature at the same time. For the visitors who come for the exhibit, there are a lot of possibilities for reflections. Let's hear what they have to say about this. I like how he visualized that going through a portal Onto, and he placed it right in front of the pyramids. And it's a way to just imagine if we could somehow visit the, the civilization and, and see it ourselves and ask them a lot of questions and so on. Best one so far was the observatory one because I uh, like how the artist made us see uh, the pyramids from a different point of view. I love the experience and I love how we can see the pyramid from a different point of view. Uh, to having the artworks in the desert is something fantastic. And just imagine having the backdrop of the pyramid is something that is one of the seven wonders of the world. One of the artists that hit my heart was the, the, um, the, the pyramid done by the artist, the Saudi artist, Shasha. He made the a pyramid out of the boxes or out of the, the ethnic Egyptian boxes where we used to have the pigeons and the chickens. He made out of this a pyramid building that you could go inside. Out of simplicity, he made something that is sustainable and that is uh, in the interior, you have lights and you have air. It, is, it was a, a, a fantastic, innovative imagination and very sustainable. Forever is Now 3, presented by Art de Egypt, will enchant audiences from October 26th to November 18th, 2023. And it seems well worth a visit. Now it's time for the latest travel, tourism and aviation updates for those who are looking for the best experiences worldwide. Take a look at our news day. The Civil Aviation Administration of China has confirmed that regular direct passenger flights between China and the United States are set to rise from 48 to 70 per week during the winter and spring season of 2023 to 24. This increase in weekly direct passenger flights between the world's two largest economies aims to enhance people-to-people -people connections and bolster economic and trade exchanges. As of November 9th, the US Department of Transportation has granted Chinese airlines the authority to expand the total number of weekly round-trip passenger flights to the US to 35, matching the allowance for US airlines. Consequently, the combined total of such flights will reach 70 per week. Throughout the year, both nations have incrementally introduced additional regular direct passenger flights, with the weekly count escalating to 36 on September 1st and further climbing to 48 as of October 29th. <laughs> Approximately a thousand individuals assembled at a prominent monument in Argentina's capital last Sunday, all donning Spider-Man costumes in an attempt to set a new world record for the largest gathering of people dressed as the iconic Marvel superhero at a single public event. Argentine influencer Uki Dean orchestrated this event through Instagram, aiming to surpass a previous gathering in Malaysia where 685 people dressed as Spider-Man. 
He expressed confidence in clinching the Guinness World Records title with the turnout at Buenos Aires' renowned obelisk monument. While Guinness World Records has not yet issued a statement, organizers requested participants to provide signatures and have their photos taken as documentation for submission to the record-keeping organization. These Spider-Man enthusiasts, emulating the character created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, cheered and sang merrily under the sunny afternoon sky. Archaeologists in Santiago, working on a subway project, unearthed 13,000-year-old remains, including eight human skeletons. This discovery unveils the presence of nomadic populations in the valley, a revelation previously unknown. The findings include two human skeletons, stone spear points, seeds and camel bone fragments. Before this, nomadic populations were only known in the Cordillera and coastal areas of central Chile. This new treasure trove suggests that hunter-gatherer groups migrated and temporarily settled in what is now Santiago. These prehistoric nomads existed between the post-glacial period and the subsequent American population wave. Since 2020, extensive archaeological work on a 17-hectare site has been underway, northwest of Santiago. This site will also host parking facilities and workshops for Line 7 of the new metro system, set to be operational in 2028. That's all we have time for on the show this week, but we'll return again next weekend with another episode. Until then, it's me, Johan Castell, signing off, as we leave you with visuals from New York where fans of the TV show Friends flocked to remember Matthew Perry.